Hey what's up, it's uh, I'm Skater and I'm going to be doing a tutorial quickly on the breakaway text and like the transforming text that I did at the end of the Broska Full Tritage uh, trailer. A lot of people are asking me how I did that, how I achieved that effect and really how I got it was just really just messing around in Cinema 4D. I've never seen a tutorial on this or anything, I just kind of was messing around got this out of it so I'm gonna teach you how I achieve the effect and uh, I'm just gonna use a quick studio setup from Grayscale Gorilla because I have his light kit and I love his lighting so I'm just gonna use one of his setups if you don't have a setup you can just set up a couple planes and uh, put a couple lights that's pretty pretty simple I'm not gonna tell you how to get the Grayscale Gorilla light kit so don't ask me um, one because I don't remember how I got it and two, just because I don't want to keep giving it out for free. I feel bad just getting it for free myself. But moving on, so I'm just go it takes forever to load, but I'm going to pick a studio. I'm going to just pick the Three Light Project Studio. Replace these. And what you're going to want to do is go to MoGraph, Text Object. And go ahead and type in whatever you want. I'm gonna say transformers. Like that. And the font a lot of people are asking me what font I used. I just found it the other day. It's called Molot or Molo. Molot Molot Molo. I don't know. And then uh, change the depth out a little bit so it's a little bit thicker. That looks good. Like this. Right about there on my pre-render see if it looks good oh, oh and also you can add a fillet cap and that'll give it a smoother looking I go 3.5 you can go 3.4 it looks good too um let me render this so yeah that looks pretty damn sexy so I'm gonna use this and what you're gonna want to do next is you're gonna want to go to uh, you're gonna want to click on your text object and hit C the letter C that makes this text object editable and what you're gonna want to do is bring down all these drop down menus select the T then select the S and drag them above the text object and then you're gonna want to just be able to delete the rest of that stuff so now you have every letter separated and that's exactly what you want then you're gonna want to ugh. then you're gonna want to go to MoGraph and go to Fracture Object. Select all your letters again and put it underneath Fracture Object so it has a little arrow pointing down. Go to that and now they're all connected to the Fracture Object. You can move that or you can move each letter individually still, but you don't want to do that. Next, you're gonna want to go to Plugins, Throusy, and just Throusy. You have to have Throusy any version of it, I'm pretty sure it works. Just hit Throusy, and I'm gonna use about six pieces. What this is saying is that I'm going to cut each letter into six individual pieces. So this one will be cut into six different pieces, this letter will be cut into six different pieces. So I'm gonna use about eight, because I've never really used this much, but I'm gonna try it for this one. I'm gonna hit break now. It's gonna go ahead and break your text. After it's done with that, you can close down this menu. And you can look, it's all the same color. If you want to pick, uh, before you do Throusty, if you want the inside color and the outside color to be different, what you're going to want to do is before you even cut it or anything, is you're going to want to. Here, I can actually show you that real quick. Uh, no, I can't. Can't go back that far. But all you really got to do is you set a color on the outside and a color on the inside, meaning like say you wanted it black on the inside and the outside so what you would do is say this was the T you would just set a black uh, you would set a black on the inside if you want the inside black and a black on the outside if you want the outside black so you change that one piece that's all you really got to do but I'm not going to do that for this tutorial then what you're going to want to do is go to MoGraph again, go down to Random Effector. 
see you can already see that it changes a bunch of stuff there and uh, I'm gonna delete this one actually and you're gonna drag that underneath the random effector and as you can see the reason it's already messed up is because everything's set already off of zero if you set all these back to zero boom you have your original text like that now what you gotta do in order to transform it is you gotta set these to however you think it looks like this so I wanna set it out like about, about this maybe wider further apart then what else also what else I do is I change the rotation and uh, that gives it a better look you can set these way up way up and then yeah just like that so you can just change the rotations underneath your fracture object so you have the random effect and you're changing the position and rotation you can change the scale I don't think it looks very good though because it like it makes the pieces not look like they're set at a certain I don't know I don't know how to explain it, it just doesn't look real and uh, what we're gonna want to do next is keyframing and I'm gonna put this to about 200 frames because 90 frames is only about three seconds think about it if you're going about if you want to render it at 30 frames per second this is one second this is two seconds this is three seconds every 30 frames would be a second and I usually render my cinema 4d things only at 30 frames and uh, so I'm gonna go to about three two seconds two seconds and change the X to zero this is how I do it every time then I'm gonna go to 65 and I'm gonna change the Y to zero and then I'm gonna go to 70 and I might just bring this down a little bit and then bring down the rotation down a little bit too and then 75 basically you're just kinda creating like your own little keyframed movements of how you want it to spin and stuff and uh, finally right here I'll set this back to zero and I'm back to my main text so we'll start oh I forgot to hit keyframe I'm an idiot okay so in order to start keyframing since I'm an idiot uh, hit this little button right here it's like two little arrows I can't really tell because it's looks like two arrows going in a circular motion hit that that's the auto keyframe button and then this is the set your own keyframe button if you're not doing it automatically but basically like I said go to about two seconds and I'm gonna set this to zero go to about 65 set this one to zero go up to about 70 set this one to zero and set this one down a little bit maybe go to 75 change this one to way lower change this one to way lower put it up to about 90 and solve it that'll work so now you can see it goes in spins and comes together so real simple not much to it and then all you really have to do is hit render I'm going to change my GI because I don't like it on this one it never works you don't have to do this don't worry about this part and uh, when you go to render it out in case you guys don't have good render settings go to save go to quicktime movie hit this little button with the three dots save it under as whatever you want and then go to output go 1280 by 720 at 300 resolution 300 resolution is great um, I learned that in photography I don't know exactly why and if you want it if you're rendering and you've done this before and all you can get is a single picture that's because you have to come down to frame range and you have to go to all frames so 0 to 200 and then that should be it let me check through quick also go to anti-aliasing late aliasing I don't know how to say that and uh, change the filter to uh, animation and the uh, anti aliasing to best then go to option and turn off auto light if you're using a softbox type of thing and I always change the level of detail to one about 110 depending if your computer can handle it and 105 for brightness and then I just hit render and then it will start to render and uh, I'll show you guys some 
tips in After Effects to make this look even better, but I'll just wait for this to render and I'll come back. Okay, so once you're done rendering, ooh, a bunch of bottles dropped. So once you're done rendering in Cinema 4D, in order to get the look I kind of got in the Broska Full Tritage, all you have to really do is um, add a color correction and a motion blur. Now what I do for the motion blur is I go to Real Smart Motion Blur 3.0 and I just drop it on there. The default settings work good, but I also like to do 0 .70 and 100, and then uh, go to Effect, Color Correction, Curves. And I have a couple presets here, not a couple, a lot, and I used Sick too for uh, the Broska full, and it gives it a cool look. It just, yeah, that's basically it. And then you render it out, and you can upload it. But that's basically it. That's my tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it. Like, comment, subscribe. Peace out.